uh, non-governmental organization in Sarajevo, Media Center Sarajevo. But I'm also a, a trainer um, and an educator. Um, I do training courses on solution journalism. Uh, I do training courses on verification of information, on ethical principles in journalism. So my focus is journalism. And I know that a lot of you are actually uh, journalists, but however, we will try to cover this topic also uh, from the perspective of communicators. So to try how we can and to see how we can benefit from uh, explanatory and solution journalism. Um, OK, uh, before we start, I would like to do uh, for you to do one quick uh, test. It's very uh, brief, so um, you can see on the slide here. Uh, the link um, it's called so actually if you just can type um, upgrader.gapminder.org uh, and try to answer um, a couple of questions that come up so you will see um, uh, a link for the questions so and just try briefly to answer one or two or three questions um, that just come up uh, and see if you can do it correctly or not okay uh, we are still waiting um we are still waiting for others to join us uh, can you see the slides um and you don't, we can see yeah. uh, your first slide uh okay this moment. sorry can you see now the first the second uh no it's still the, the same slide with your name on it. Maybe maybe try to share the presentation once again. Okay, now please check now. Yes. Okay. Okay, try to, uh, so I posted the link here. So just, uh, if you go, can go to this page and uh, just try to answer some of the first questions. I hope now you can see the slide, right? You cannot see the slides. You can just see the first. I'm moving them now, please. Uh, just let me know if you can see them when I move them. Anita, I think that the slides are stuck. Um, maybe try to share the presentation once again. From OK, so great. So please, uh, uh, apologies for this. Um, so while I upload the slides again, please just try to do this short exercise, okay? <clears throat> okay, um, can you see it now? I yeah. upload it again. Okay. Yes. Cool. Great. Okay. Uh, so just try to answer some of the first questions that come up. Uh, did you do it? Okay, so who has tried to answer one or two questions? And if you can just post um, your uh, responses, like did you uh, manage to get the answer right or not? Yes, Christian? Has anyone tried? Okay, wrong. Did anyone respond correctly? Okay. Anyone else? 
Um, okay, so um, maybe later after this lecture, you can try to answer more questions um, uh, that you find uh, on the slide. But basically, uh, this uh, small exercise is uh, to show you that often we have a wrong uh, perspective of the world. So often we see things um, worse than they are. So um, often we see that the current situation is worse um, than it really is. So the current political situation, the current economic situation, etc. So mostly the answers to the questions uh, that you have on that particular link, uh, mostly people answer them in the wrong way. So for example, one of the questions um, that came up was how many companies in the world have a woman uh, as top manager? So most people answer um, around 2%, but actually it's more, it's around 80%. Or um, there is a question about what happened to the global suicide rate uh, in the last 20 years. Uh, so most people would answer that actually the suicide rate increased by 25%, while the correct answer is that it decreased um, about 25%. So the idea and the aim of this short exercise was actually to show you how often uh, the so-called negativity bias uh, from uh, journalism and journalism reporting that we often see in news tend, um, gives us a wrong uh, perception um, of the world. Although the situation, of course, is not ideal, there are so many issues, wrong issues, and, and especially when it comes to environmental topics, still, there are some positive developments in the world, especially when we look um, at the uh, uh, throughout history um, and now. So my uh, aim is today to actually show you what is solution journalism, how, instead of focusing on the negative sides um, of um, um, of our uh, societies, we can focus on responses and solutions to these issues, but also to show you what is explanatory journalism. Uh, so our objectives, um, our objective today is to first um, understand what is uh, solution journalism and what is explanatory journalism, uh, then to see why um, solution and explanatory journalism are important. So why um, are these new trends um, are being developed uh, in different countries, why we should also incorporate them in the Western Balkan countries and um, in other regions as well. And then also to see some of the techniques that we can use uh, from explanatory and solution journalism in our uh, e either daily reporting or also in um, our coverage of different stories on environmental topics, but also in our communication uh, strategies. Okay. Uh, so first of all, I will try uh, to explain what is explanatory journalism. Have you heard about the term? Maybe you can use the chat. Please always use the chat um, for uh, any questions, comments, um, etc. Okay. Good. So explanatory journalism is very simple. So it basically explains. It's um, journalism that tries to cover very complex topics, such as environmental topics or scientific topics, um, in simple languages. So our aim is that wider audiences can, can understand them. Okay. Uh, it is something that we often also call uh, slow journalism. So it's not um, based on only daily reporting or daily news, but um, journalism that takes time to explain to its readers um, about different topics and gives context and additional information on that topic. So again, coming back to um, environmental journalism as well. So basically it gives background to the story, context to the story, it, it explains the course of events, uh, explains why a particular topic is important, uh, it focuses on why and how and not uh, only on who, what, when and where. And this uh, type of journalism is very good when it comes, uh, when speaking about environmental topics and scientific topics, because these topics are often um, difficult to understand by a wider audiences. So we really need to try to explain uh, such complex topics to audiences, to different audiences who do not have uh, scientific uh, backgrounds um, uh, or are not uh, specialized in specific topics that we are covering, okay? 
so basically, uh, one uh, important thing about explanatory journalism is that it uses simple sentences, okay, uh, to explain top, uh, complex topics. It's often also um, followed by, a uh, journalists often use different graphs, animations, explainers, um, also um, um, something that we call scrolly telling. So you scroll through the story um, and you have different graphs, uh, videos, um, also parts of text with pictures that explain uh, the topic to the reader. Okay, and um, there are different um, uh, different media and also journalists that uh, use this type of um, reporting. So, for example, Guardian, New York, New York Times, um, Atlant Atlantic, BuzzFeed, etc., have specific uh, sections um, on their um, in their media dedicated to explanatory journalism. Um, we still don't have a good translation for explanatory journalism, but um, sometimes, for example, in my language, we use explanatory uh, novinarstvo um, or objašnivatko um, novinarstvo, uh, journalism that explain. And also there is every year a Pulitzer Prize um, uh, award that is being awarded for explanatory journalism. And sometimes um, actually the topics that are being awarded is for um, an environmental topics. So for example, um, in 2020, uh, the award was given to the Washington Post. It was for uh, their uh, story on um, the effects of stream, extreme temperatures on the planet. And they produce really a series of stories, um, often followed by graphics, um, explainers, also followed by some, again, what we call scrolly telling to show, show the, the effects of um, extreme temperatures um, on the planet. And I, if you have time, I definitely encourage you to check this article. This is just one article here, the link. Um, uh, that I provided it's just one part, um, one article, and they have really throughout the um, a, the year or a couple of years they were producing to, um, stories um, on the um, effect of extreme temperatures um, on the planet. Um, this is a screenshot of this particular article. So uh, why uh, should we do explanatory journalism again? So because um, media reporting. Um, it's, um, often focuses on daily events um, and often is some what we call superficial, right? Uh, lacks context, lacks additional information, and um, often audiences are really um, also disinformed or lack uh, background information on a particular subject. So this is the case with the media in the Western Balkans, but often also the case with the media in um, other parts uh, of Europe as well. Uh, so what we are lacking is we lack scientific journalists, we lack specialized reporting on more complex topics, and also journalists who would use simple sentences and simple language to explain um, complex stories and complex topics to um, the audiences. So often re the, re um, the reporting um, uh, is uh, lacks context, lacks additional information, and is focused on political uh, daily events without, you know, give, uh, giving um, a space for topics such as environment. Um, environmental co topics are re rarely covered in the media of the Western Balkans. I know that uh, youth media are trying to dedicate more time and space uh, to this um, particular type of reporting and to the to environmental topics. But however, when it comes to mainstream media, and especially online media, they are mainly focusing on um, political events and then uh, would um, just produce stories or articles on environment when there are some um, negative um, uh, things that happen or some uh, disasters that happen or some protests of uh, local um, uh, local cit of citizens in local communities. Um, at, for environmental issues, but however, there is re we are really lacking a dedicated um, media outlet or dedicated journalists who would cover um, environmental topics. Okay, so now I explain just briefly what is environmental journalism, and I will try to um, 
go and to focus on solution journalism because this is really the focus of our uh, meeting today. Uh, I would say that solution journalism is also a type of explanatory journalism, but because it's also a journalism that explains, but it explains a response to a certain problem. Okay, so we are we should always because uh, we are speaking about environmental communication, we should always think about uh, environmental issues. So we are looking at how to focus and how to report and cover a response to environmental um, issues. Okay, uh, so solution journalism is basically um, rigorous, evidence-based reporting on responses to social problems. Okay, so we are looking for responses that exist and then and that have um, that for which we can have evidence that work. Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, solution journalism covers a response to a problem and how this response happened. Okay, so um, I'm using the term response rather than solution because there aren't perfect solutions to um, problems. However, uh, sometimes you will hear also the term a solution to a certain problem. Uh, then first we need so to cover a response that works. So, for example, a response to air pollution, a response to light pollution, or um, a response to food waste, etc. If there are such responses in our communities, um, at the local level, or at um, uh, uh, city level, or at the uh, national level, then what we need is to provide evidence um, as journalists um, that this is working. So it does the solution or the response doesn't have to be perfect, but we have to have some evidence. So this evidence evidence can be um, uh, qualitative data or quantitative data that we um, obtain. So, for example, if there is a model that was set up in a city um, that is a response to air pollution, maybe we can provide data showing that um, how air pollution uh, decreased uh, with this model, okay? And um, qualitative data could be uh, responses from citizens, from um, city officials uh, who are saying how this imp this model improved their life um, and how uh, how it impacted their daily activities, um, etc. Okay. Um, then, um, so the third part element is we need to pr provide insights that this response is working. So, and how it was set up. So why do we need insights? Um, it's good to have insights and to show insights because others can also uh, reproduce this model. Okay, so for example, every day, every winter um, in Sarajevo, I am reading um, news uh, articles about how Sarajevo is the most polluted city in the world. Uh, also, probably North Macedonia people are reading how uh, Skopje is the most polluted city in the world. Rarely I really read or not, I, I never found um, an article in the local media about a model from another city, from another country, from another uh, town that was set up and that um, in decreased air pollution. So this is solution journalism showing that there are responses, that there are effective responses and that they work. Okay. And producing, giving insights how that particular um, model was set up. And the fourth um, step or the fourth uh, principle of solution journalism is actually giving limitations. So when producing a story about the response, um, in addition to uh, showing how it's working, uh, providing evidence that it's working and giving insights how it was set up, so how this model was set up, okay. Um, the fourth thing I need to do as a journalist is also to give limit, uh, provide limitations. So what is what is the limit or what is the limitation of that particular response? Because there is no perfect response, right? Um, and I need to give uh, also limitations to the story. For example, that it doesn't, a model doesn't cover the whole city when it comes to air pollution, that air is still polluted in one part of the city, or that um, it doesn't, um, uh, it, the air, uh, the air pollution decrease. However, still there are many, um, uh, still, the, it's not healthy for um, elderly people, etc. So I always need to provide also limitations to my story. Okay, so why I need to provide limitations is because this is not PR. I'm not doing a PR story. I'm not uh, showing um, 
about some good initiatives of a certain individual or an organization, but actually I'm um, trying to look at models, how they work, what is the evidence um, that they work and what are the limitations. Okay? So um, solution journalism was actually um, is promoted now and, um, and was started basically by an organization that is called um, Solution Journalism Network. Uh, and there, uh, one of the uh, founders of Solution Journalism uh, Network is a journalist who writes, uh, um, contributes and writes articles for this uh, column called Fixes, so in New York Times. So basically, it's um, these are uh, pieces about certain fixes to uh, certain issues and problems. So fixes is the term that is being used. So, okay, we have a problem. Let's look how it's being fixed. Okay, so this is, for example, um, on, um, an article about um, Ebola vaccine that was um, produced. So everybody knows about Ebola and how it started, and they were so shocking and um, uh, images and articles about Ebola, but rarely we were informed of, about how it was prevented and how the vaccine um, was produced. Okay, uh, also transition. So today we are having also a guest lecture. Uh, from a uh, transitions uh, organization from the Czech Republic, who is also a solution uh, journalism network trainee, uh, Minal uh, Takur, and they also produce on their website, you can find um, articles um, on solution journalism. So for example, these are some of the articles that they produce, uh, for example, about um, certain initiatives and models uh, for elderly people, um, uh, that were um, initiated during COVID-19 because they had to stay um, uh, in their homes and um, this model was set up that they connect with uh, young people, um, et cetera. There is another uh, also interesting article from Bosnia and Herzegovina, again, about um, initiatives uh, for um, elderly people and how they, they, through arts and crafts, they, they fight uh, loneliness. Another example is from the uh, magazine, uh, The Local, it's really the largest English uh, language news uh, network in Europe, um, and they decided to change the, the way they cover migration. So, for example, in the news, we often um, hear about migration the mi or the term that is often used, the migrant crisis, um, migrants and about migrants and refugees in a negative way. So, so we and it's very stereotypical and often it produces also uh, raises hatred towards uh, migrants and refugees um, in the Western Balkans. Um, however, this um, uh, particular organization uh, tried to uh, change their approach to uh, covering migration and try to look uh, initiatives that work. So, for example, this article is about um, an initiative in Belgium that is being set up and gives uh, provides to uh, refugees opportunities for uh, raising their skills and for finding um, employment. Um, okay, so let's. So this is um, a bit about um, solution journalism uh, in general. So often, as you saw, it's being used to cover stories um, on responses to social problems. So often, you will find stories about uh, problems and responses to. Um, um, discrimination to marginalized groups, to um, certain in initiatives at um, local levels that are helping uh, marginalized groups, etc. However, uh, increasingly it is being also used for environmental topics. And um, now we mentioned some um, of these stories, or actually one. Uh, in the Western Balkans, a, um, a number of stories in the region have been produced um, following solution journalism principles. And um, uh, and responses or existing responses to environmental topics. So when if we want to use this kind of um, journalism, we have to see what are the existing responses to env environmental topics. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, in the region, we do not do not have many. However, there are if we look good um, in other countries, in other cities, but also um, at the local level in um, in the region. So, for example, what um, some of the articles that have been produced are about responses to food waste, to air pollution, also something uh, very interesting that is called light pollution. And these stories have been produced um, in Novi Sad, uh, Novi Sad, Sad in Serbia, then about uh, responses to textile waste, um, etc. 
So what these stories cover, um, and even if you would like to uh, try to do solution journalism, is they could be like um, um, covering uh, a model uh, that relates to a legal framework. For example, a new legal framework was set up for um, reducing um, light pollution in the city um, and how it's working, what's the, the evidence that it works, uh, what are the insights, how this model and framework was set up and what are its limitations. Then it could be um, a city administration initiative, it could be an initiative of civil um, society organization, etc. Often um, the uh, stories, um, especially in the region, focus on civil society organizations and their initiatives because they're, I would say that they're most active um, in the field, especially um, organizations dealing with environmental uh, topics. And um, again, so what are the basic principles of solution journalism is um, finding a response that works, providing evidence that it works, giving insights uh, how it was set up and also providing uh, limitations. Uh, this is one story um, that was produced by uh, Story Tedler. It's a local uh, media organization from Serbia and they do amazing stories. Uh, and it was about um, um, about the issue of uh, waste in local communities and about and about setting a, um, a, a place for collecting uh, waste. Um, so um, uh, that, that was set up in uh, Sremska Mitrovica and that could be um, a good model for other uh, cities uh, as well. Okay. And another article was also produced by um, an, uh, a media outlet from uh, North Macedonia. It was about uh, textile whales, waste and different initiatives um, on how to tackle uh, textile waste um, in uh, in the region. So the authors focused on one or um, one initiative particular in um, their um, community. Okay, um, are there any questions so far? Uh, do you have, uh -huh, you are having some issues with the slides. Oh, so sorry, maybe, I think that my presentation is really heavy. Uh, okay, uh, can we move on? So I'm currently on uh, slide 21. Okay, uh, thank you. So uh, slide uh, 21 is actually um, summarizing the main principles of solution journalism and your um, exercise will be related to these principles. So basically, again, just to repeat, uh, it's a re uh, solution journalism is covering in details, so really in details, um, responses to problems um, that work or that are working to a certain extent, giving evidence that these responses are working, okay, uh, giving insights how these responses are working, uh, and also providing uh, limitations, okay? And again, this is uh, uh, something that we also call slow journalism. It really takes time to produce a solution journalism story. Most often um, our authors uh, worked on their stories for two or three uh, months, really covering in detail a specific um, uh, topic. So what we are doing is we are not um, avoiding to talk about problems. No, the problem is there, right? We are doing this because there is an issue, but we focus on uh, the response to that issue or problem, okay? Uh, so, so it's very also important to know what solution journalism is not. So now I'm slide 22, on slide 22. So it's not about celebrating individuals or celebrating certain organizations. So we are
Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now, Anita. Okay, something went wrong. Um, okay, so I was just saying about, um, can you see the presentation? Yes. Yeah. Okay, are there any questions? Uh, okay, I'm just, I was just going through uh, what solution journalism is not, so, and it's very important to know it. And we are on slide 22. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, and here are some of the um, uh, stories that have been produced. I will not go in, into them because um, a lot of them do not cover environmental topics. But again, it's very important for you to see that this um, type of uh, journalism is being used around the world and there are many uh, organizations that are and many journalists that are following solution journalism. So solution journalism is not a theory. So we are, I'm not saying what should be done. So when I cover a story, I'm not saying how air pollution should be um, decreased in, in Sarajevo or in Skopje, but I have to show a model. Look, this is working. So it's not a theory but it's actually um, rigorous reporting on something already in process, okay? Um, then slide number 22, it's not a silver bullet, so I'm not saying there is a tool that can uh, so, um, uh, solve everything, but I'm trying to give data and I'm tr um, what responses work and what do not work, okay? And now we're focusing, again, always having my environmental issues. Okay, then it's not, um, so solution journalism again, and this is what I always, when I, I mentored um, um, a lot of um, stories of uh, local journalists, and they always try to cover the story, focusing on the problem, and then just mentioning a model or saying what, what can be done. No, this is not solution journalism. Maybe it could be called constructive journalism, but solution should really focus on a model on an um, on a response okay so in details to cover a model for um, whether it's um, air pollution whether it's um, uh, light pollution etc so really giving details about that particular model rather than just mentioning it as an afterthought okay so going into the details about this um, model. It's also not, um, again, celebrating individuals or celebrating uh, certain organizations, or if somebody gave a donation for, for example, um, helping the local community deal with waste, etc. This is not solution journalism. Okay, we are not speaking about don donations or activism. So this is serious uh, journalism, and we are dealing about and investigating about a certain uh, model. Okay. And uh, finally, uh, to have what we should have in mind is why we need to do, why we can um, need to do, and it would be good to um, use this kind of approach in our uh, daily reporting. So a lot of times editors in the region are really reluctant to try um, to cover a model or a response because they say that they, um, they don't have time, they don't have resources to do this kind of uh, reporting or that they are, um, this is a PR, so they believe more in traditional journalism. However, the reason why um, this is becoming more and more um, of a good option for different uh, journalists is because there is this trend of news avoidance. So often when I do, for example, focus groups with um, um, audiences and with young people, uh, they will tell me that they don't want to follow news because it's so, uh, packed with negative um, issues only about it's only focused on the ne um, negative side of our society and also um, global reports and re um, researchers are showing that um, there is this trend of news avoidance especially among young people then the negativity bias that I mentioned of um, the media is really giving us the wrong perception um, of the world. So, I mean, of course, the main role of journalists and journalism is to focus on um, issues to be um, there for us to point to when there is um, corruption in the government, when there are um, abuses of power, 
um, etc. However, it's also uh, the role of journalists is also to show the uh, some of the responses and models to that work. So to be also not only watchdog but also to be guide dog. Um, and often just covering the negative side um, of the stories, we really have the sense of um, helplessness um, and um, as voiceless victims. So often um, groups that we are, rep especially marginalized groups, activists, um, activists in uh, local ecological organizations are often um, being shown as voiceless victims, as helpless, that the issue is helpless, that cannot be solved, etc. While with solution journalism, we focus on response and resilience, and we show really that uh, there are issues and models, um, that, that there are models to certain issues, and there are models that can solve um, issues in our local communities or at uh, national levels. Okay. And this uh, slide 29, if um, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure that you are moving your slides, uh, shows this distinction or difference between traditional journalism and uh, the new or solution journalism. So the traditional journalism is often being, being uh, described as watchdog journalism, right? Um, so journalists are watchdogs, they watch our house and if there is a danger, um, in the neighborhood, or, or if they um, so see some something uh, problematic or dangerous, they would react. Okay, so they would point. Look, well, there is corruption. There is there are environmental issues. Um, air is po being polluted, etc. Uh, they warn uh, people who are in that house, right? Or they warn citizens. While uh, solution journalism is about uh, journalism being a guide dog. So instead of only barking to problems, look, there are problems. There are issues. We are guiding, so we are look, showing, uh, journalists are showing um, to the society and to the audiences that there are solutions, there are responses, uh, and we will guide you. So we will show you the responses to certain issues. Uh, and briefly, so my part uh, ten will need to be around um, 45 minutes. So um, I just wanted to uh, show to you how um, some of the stories, um, how can you start doing these stories if you're interested um, in doing it. Uh, so it's very important, first of all, uh, that you uh, identify the issue or question of concern. So what is the issue that you want to focus on? So for example, it could be an issue on um, certain environmental uh, topics in your local um community or um or at the national level etc maybe um, you want to cover the issue of um uh, food waste in your uh, community etc so you have to um, uh, folk, um identify the issue that you need to cover and then uh see first of all whether there is awareness about that issue okay so uh if we are um, aware about the problem if the citizens aware about the problem, then you you can aim for uh, uh, covering or trying to find a response. OK, so again, going back to air pollution, because this is the biggest issue, um, environmental issue um, in our um, in our region, we are often uh, looking at different articles, looking at different news co uh, coverages of um, <clears throat> of air pollution in our cities. However, rarely we do have an article uh, or um, that covers a, a, a response. For example, in London, there was a, a legal framework that was set up long time ago and that really showed that um, or that that impacted and had an impact and brought to the decrease of um, air pollution in that city. So, for example, covering in detail that particular response uh, would be um, OK, uh, would be um, would be a good way to to also for the local governments or the local authorities to see, look, maybe we can also try to set up something similar. OK, Maria, I will answer that question later, but it's a good uh, question um, as well. So if there is a lot of awareness about the problem that you want to cover, then aiming, looking for a response is always, always a good way. So because again, we are really sometimes fed up of, about the stories about the negative impact about air pollution or in issues with the environment in our societies. 
there it's really good to also show to the audiences that there are certain response response um okay um so here are also some tips tips in the slide uh you will see some tips that you can use um if you want to cover um your uh, or if you want to try to do this kind of journalism okay uh I will not go because I don't have a lot of time. I will not go through all the exercises, but at home you can really, or later you can try um, uh, to do uh, these um, exercises. Um, one is about um, what uh, your editor assigns you um, a, a, a hundred word or two minute solutions story on what's working to reduce food waste. Uh, what, uh, where might you find uh, story ideas? Okay, maybe we can try to do this short exercise and then I will um, uh, give the word to uh, me now. Maybe you can use the, the chat option. So, okay, the exercise on page 34 is uh, your editor assigns you like a one pager um, document to write a prepare a document on solution story on what uh, what's working to reduce food waste where uh, might you find your story ideas where would you look for them anyone civil society organizations maybe or so it's Okay, good food and agriculture organization of UN so yes you can try with them anyone else local community exactly see if there are some local organizations dealing with this like local ecological organizations and I think that there are many in the region and very good ones startups okay maybe good farmer associations great public kitchens okay yes public kitchens can be a good idea exactly maybe they yes um, and definitely are working on that uh, great. So there are many, as you mentioned, there are really many different um, uh, banks of food. Okay, good. Thank you. So yes, definitely you should start. So you want to cover this story, you should really start first looking at where you can find a response or solution. So and as you mentioned, there are different um, either organizations um, at, the, um, at the local level or international organizations where you can find your ask answers okay so also farmers associations um, uh, scientists as well maybe there are scientists in your local communities who are covering these topics great and google of course yes <laughs> google is always a good uh, solution as well um, great um, great responses um, okay definitely international organizations uh, maybe we can try then also to do a next short um, short example. Uh, okay, now we discovered a nonprofit um, organization that is doing very well at reducing food waste in your community. Okay, what questions would you ask them? What would you ask? What kind of questions? Just one question that first comes into your mind. Anyone? How you are doing it? That's great. Exactly. That's the main question in solution journalism. How are you doing to do? How are you working on reducing food waste? Great. Okay. What method are you using? Where? Okay. How do you measure the food waste reduction? Great. One else. Okay, how can we reduce waste? Great. So basically, it, very good answers. Um, and um, you are right. The main question would be how. And these are the insights. So giving insights to the um, uh, to the readers or to the audiences how something was set up, how they are doing it, is really um, the core um, the core part of solution journalism. Okay. So in these slides, and I. I um, now know that you have them you have really a list of questions 
that are being used for uh, solution journalism stories. And I definitely advise you that you go uh, through them. We really don't have um, a lot of time, uh, but um, please make sure to go through these uh, slides um, um, because they can give, give you more details and they are a very good guide um, to your um, to uh, solution journalism stories. And of course, if you would like to um, cover uh, that uh, these stories. And the final question for you then would be, uh, okay, we found, um, we looked for an um, organization or for um, an actor who um, who is uh, dealing or who is working on reducing food waste in our uh, community. Uh, we uh, prepared the questions and now we have to look for data. So what for what kind of data would you look for? What data do we need to have in our story? Good question, still arriving. Okay. Okay, so uh, remember, because when we do solution journalism stories, we need also to have evidence. So what kind of data do we need to use? Okay, um, sustainable development goals and its targets. Okay, good. Whether the local uh, community is implementing these um, goals. Yes, we need statistics. So how, yes, how they're doing it. And um, we need statistical data about that food waste was reduced, right? Okay. Exactly. One of the issues uh, when covering these topics is really um, obtaining data uh, because often um, either our um, authorities do not have data or do not want to give data to journalists. Okay. Evidence-based data. Okay, basically we have to always cover or try to cover um, and include data uh, in our stories. So uh, to show evidence that this uh, really is working. Okay, so please uh, make sure to go through the slides, um, especially for those of you who are very, who are interested to cover these stories. I don't know if anyone has tried before to do solution journalism um, or not. I know that someone asked, uh, for, there was a question about who will pay for these stories. Um, and uh, my answer is uh, sometimes there are grants uh, for uh, solution journalism stories and transi transitions was one of the organizations that gave grants to local journalists to cover uh, solution journalism stories. But the, uh, my another answer is that these stories really pay off because there um, are research studies that show uh, that um, uh, that um, audience increase or that people are more um, willing to stay um, online and to read the whole story when it's solution um, oriented rather than problem oriented. So. Uh, Maybe um, now um, editors are re reluctant to use this um, approach, but in um, in the future it can really pay off because they can new audiences can be um, attracted by these uh, stories. Um, and um, as as I said, there are research studies that show that um, p um, audiences um, are especially online are willing to stay more and to read the whole story and not just you know to focus on the title and um, then um, to go to another story when it's a problem um, or um, okay so for the end I just wanted um, and um, later I will explain the um, the homework that you have to do but this is basically um, so on page 14 or on slide 42 um, okay, I will definitely. Uh, so on page uh, 42, there are um, there is something that is called Solution Story Tracker. It's set up by a Solution Journalism Network. It's based, basically a database of um, different solution journalism stories uh, that were uh, produced around the world. So um, I will just uh, and um, on the platform, you have a detailed explanation about your homework, but basically you should go to this um, solution story tracker and find a story on environmental topics. So what you can do is just um, type um, environment or food waste or air pollution or um, 
uh, anything that you want to cover uh, or you're interested particularly in your group. And then there are read the story and there are, um, um, there are questions to you that you need to answer, okay? But we can go back to the homework later. Um, Yes, there are you. Um, there are um, based. Yes, you U.S. based, but there are also some articles that are uh, from other countries as well. Definitely, uh, solution um, uh, journalism stories are more produced in the U.S. and there are more and more stories in the U.S. But there are um, uh, a lot of uh, stories on environmental topics, and I think it's also good to. Um, check and to read stories on environmental topics and especially solution journalism stories from uh, the US or other countries and not um, only uh, from the region. Okay. You will definitely find uh, those that are available. I checked a lot of times and uh, stories on environmental topics. Um, you can find them through the tracker and uh, uh, yes, try just to try to search. So try searching, not, do not just focus on the first one that you find, but try to search a story that, first of all, is of your interest uh, and then um, that you find interesting and to um, also to answer that then you, when you find a story, you agree on that story, uh, you will have to answer the questions that are um, on the <clears throat> um, on the platform. Okay, so these questions mostly re relate to um, the main principles of solution journalism. So what is the response? What is the evidence that it's working? Um, what are the insights? And finally, what are the limitations? Okay. Uh, okay, now I will uh, give the floor or um, uh, the, the word to uh, Minal. So Minal comes from uh, transitions. So I already spoke about transitions. Um, so they are based in Prague and they are an organization that are uh, encouraging uh, journalists um, in the region, in Central Europe, in the Western Balkans, and uh, in Europe in general, uh, to produce solution uh, journalism stories. Uh, so Minal will speak about um, examples of, uh, so first about what they are doing in transitions, and then also give us an example of a story um, on envir environment and how it was, uh, how it was produced, and what are the main principles of solution journalism. Thank you, Mina. Hi, Anita. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for the introduction, Anita. Um, so I work, I'm a solutions journalism trainer. Anita and I actually did our training together. Um, just some background about us. And I work with Transitions. Uh, Transitions is a nonprofit. It's based in Prague, in Czech Republic. And um, Initially, our focus, and which still is a bit part of a big part of our work, uh, we have an online magazine, and that magazine usually carries news about daily events and analysis. Uh, we also work on training journalists. We have summer courses, but since 2018, we have been collaborating with the Solutions Journalism Network that Anita also mentioned to you, and uh, we have become the hub of solutions journalism in Central and Eastern Europe. And that's what's now our mission that's driving us forward. We want to continue collaborating with more journalists in and around this area, also expand our reach beyond this area. And um, we are currently working through a lot of grants. And um, we are trying our best to get in money from funders. We are also understanding that there is this kind of block that a lot of funders also want to usually um, give money to this kind of problem-centered news, which is more sensational, which we understand is actually, it's important to even uh, have a solution story in place. We, we need to talk about what's wrong. We need to talk about what the problems in societies are. But we are increasingly um, also seeing that there is an increased interest and increased demand uh, from both the readers. Um, they're engaging more with solutions news and with funders. They are wanting to fund uh, solutions journalism. So we have a couple of projects. We are giving subgrants and micro grants to journalists and freelancers. Uh, we are helping them um, in mentoring their stories and uh, teaching them about solutions journalism. And we also have uh, a cohort of uh, solutions journalism, which is the first of its kind. Um, in, in this part of Europe, and we have five newsrooms from um, Ukraine, from uh, Bosnia, Slovakia, Czech Republic, and Lithuania. 
Um, and uh, the approach is to actually use audience engagement to produce uh, impactful solutions journalism. Um, and just a few examples of the kind of work of the kind of work that we have been doing here. You can see uh, this is our latest uh, solutions journalism story. It is from Hungary. Um, this story is about how youth in the country uh, under one program, which is actually launched by their mobile operators are working with the older generation and make them making them more media literate and helping them with technology. And um, some other examples quickly to tell you about our work we are talking about. We have a story from Sarajevo uh, where um, you have young adults who are volunteering in uh, places with, where people with special needs live and integrating them into the society. We have some stories from Moldova. Uh, we have stories about a unique peer-to-peer -peer, uh, way of education that is catching up in Prague. So this is the kind of work we do. And um, here um, today, I, like Anida discussed, I am going to take one story that um, we did some time back. We mentored and edited the story and published it in our Solutions Journalism magazine. And the idea would be to help you break down the story using the four pillars of Solutions Journalism that um, Anita uh, talked you through and tell you how you can incorporate them in the story and, and produce the Solutions Journalism piece. Um, we have already talked about how when we begin a Solutions Journalism story, what's most important is to identify what topic you are looking at. It's important to identify what's the issue. Um, and once we have identified the societal problem that you're looking at, um, then you go to the public, you go to the audience, you go to the community and you ask the community, what is the missing piece of the puzzle? What is the missing piece of the problem that has not been addressed? Which is why when we talk about solutions journalism, we also say that it's, it's the whole story. It's not just one side of problem focused journalism, but it's giving you another way of entering the story. And once you have that in place, then you start looking for ideal candidates. These candidates can be community actors, organizations, one single person who has come up with a response to a social issue. Um, to, to go a bit further into approaching a story, and this is something that we've mentioned before as well, but specifically talking about how do you bring in the audience, because this webinar is also not just about environment reporting, but also how to engage audiences through solutions-focused environment reporting. So you have to understand that your um, the community that you're reporting on or the audience that you're reporting for should be the center of the story when you are identifying the problem. Uh, you should not assume when you go to an area that you know what bothers the people. You have to ask them what is the specific problem of the community that they would like you as a journalist to address. Be as precise as possible. And uh, the example of air pollution has been given before, but but just to continue on that because we have been working with that example. So if, if we are talking about um, air pollution, and if we have to put it into this context of breaking down the issue into smaller pieces, uh, which we call the problem solution access, um, it will make you analyze things like, okay, if I'm talking about air pollution, then there can be multiple solutions to air pollution. What am I talking about? Am I talking about the problem of air pollution, which is caused by industries? As the solution to that will be very different to air pollution caused by transportation, by planes, by cars, and the solution to uh, say air pollution, which is caused by household waste, et cetera, will be very different from the other two. So what's very important before you start approaching a story is to break down that I have this problem in front, in front of me, this, this societal issue, and I have found a response, but what particular part of the problem am I addressing in this story? Which also takes us back to calling solutions journalism, slow journalism, and um, explanatory journalism, which is full of analysis because we are aware of the fact that there is no one solution that fits all problems. Every solution or response, as we call it, has its nuances, and uh, which is why it's important to look at it specifically by reducing the problem to a very local community specific context. The example that uh, we have for uh, uh, today's webinar is, is the story. Uh, grown to order veggies. Um, there will be the link that we share with you after the presentation if you want to go and check it out. 
Um, so this story is basically about this uh, farmer who set up this app. I'll, I'll go back to it. Uh, the farmer who uh, set up this app in which uh, people can actually get some land, agricultural land on lease. And uh, the farmer grows organic food for them in that land. And then he sells the food directly to people who are usually living in cities. Now, if this is the this is when you zoom out, this is this is the big picture. This is this is some solution that a journalist found. But when you research the story further, then step one, as I said, is defining the problem. And in this case, we have two particular ways of entering the story. First is the problem of farmer safety. So the story, sorry, I should have mentioned before, this uh, story comes from Turkey. And here we are looking at a country specific problem of a decline in the number of farmers in the country. Uh, this is also because of the liberalization laws of the government. This is also because uh, the agricultural land over the years has declined. And in the story, you're provided with some data that um, over the years, how the number of farmers has declined from 2018 to 2020. The other problem that we approach the story with is the problem of food safety, which also becomes an environmental problem and a societal problem and an economic problem for the farmers. So the food safety problem is as such that the people in Turkey are concerned about the fact that the kind of food that they're consuming right now has a lot of insecticides, pesticides, it's not healthy, it is not being grown organically or ethically, and at the same time it's people are trying their best to have these little, little kitchen gardens in the city because they want to be environmentally conscious. They do not want to pay a lot for their food to be flown in from different parts of the world, say Africa, Latin America, Asia, so that they can consume it because that further has environmental impacts. So they're concerned about food safety. Now, these are the two big problems in front of us. And the response, the, the social response to this, this, these two problems these intertwined problems is this uh, app called Farm Mobile, uh, which I briefly told you about, uh, which helps farmers and people who want to lease land by giving them an alternative way to get, procure, produce that they want to eat, which is at the consumer level. So people like you and me who are worried about not having an environmental impact based on the food that we eat, we get an option of getting a land getting a farmer to grow some food on the land for us. And when it comes to the problem of the farmers not having enough economic sustainability and safety because they're being kicked out of the system when all these supermarket chains are coming in, it's also solving that particular issue because farmers are now for, uh, finding this uh, way of making their business of agriculture more sustainable while keeping it organic and ethical. Now, if we move to, this was the, this pillar of solutions journalism that Anita was drilling into your heads, which are very, very important. So we're talking about the, the pillar of insight now. Again, when you read the story later, um, you will see that uh, the story breaks down the response very nicely. Um, it, it goes into detail to tell the audience, how is it that this app is working? What is the idea behind it? and how are the consumers benefiting from it. So for example, um, this story gives an insight of actually this particular farmer is sending pictures to the people uh, who have paid him money and who have bought this little land from him. And they, he's sending them pictures every week on this is the progress of your food. Like, okay, I'm growing these tomatoes for you. And today they're this much and next week it's this. And this way people can also monitor the quality of the food that there are, there are no pesticides being used, etc. Uh, when it comes to the business aspect of how how it works, um, in the story you have insights on, okay, so this, this app actually allows people to have three different kinds of subscriptions. So people who are not very sure if they want to um, engage with this particular solution, they can pay less, uh, they then get lesser land on lease and they get lesser crop. Then there is a second option in which you pay a bit more, you get more land and more food in return. And then the third, which is the premium subscription, is when um, customers are actually able to lease a very big piece of land and they get a bigger produce and a different variety of food. And then in the insights, we also have the issue of food safety, which is being addressed because in the story, we also get to know that this farmer is only using local seeds wherever possible, and it's not using GMO. So this also is 
a big concern of the customers. This is also a problem, an environmental issue, which is being solved by this particular solution or this particular response. And lastly, coming back to the economic problem is when you have all these corporates come in, which corporatize agriculture, which corporatize supermarkets, then you see these middlemen come in and these middlemen or these vendors who become a part of the supply chain. Uh, it's also kind of eliminating the role of these middlemen and directly establishing contact between the farmer who is working hard, who's growing this food somewhere outside the city and the consumers in the city who want to make a conscious effort and are directly in touch with the farmers. So, the, so all the profit of the hard work does not get lost in these steps with middlemen in between, but directly goes to the, to the farmer who is doing the job. Uh, now here it's very important to mention that the, in, the insights are not just there as an explanation of how the solution worked. They hold value because the better and the deeper you explain the insights, more the chances are of someone replicating those responses because solutions journalism does not just stop at telling the audiences that there is a response to a social issue in Macedonia and the end. No, but, but actually the idea behind it is also maybe for people in nearby countries to get inspired by the solution. And once you're breaking down the insights then people who want to replicate the solution and who want to make the solution scalable, know that what were the steps that were followed while implementing this response, which made it successful. So they can also plan it and adapt it to their specific local context. So this is something you should keep in mind when you're talking about insights in the story. Moving on, uh, the spinner of evidence that Anita talked about, how it's important because evidence is what separates solutions journalism uh, from a promotional piece. Um, evidence in this story was approached from both sides, qualitative as well as quantitative. The qualitative evidence was based on anecdotes and um, testimonies of customers. So for example, on the slide, you can see that um, the reporter actually approached a customer who had renewed the subscription for the fifth time and had given a very positive response and the reason for why the customer was coming back to this farmer. So that is, that is uh, a response coming from the community. And then you also have hard data, hard facts, um, in which the journalist tells you that, okay, when this app was started, when this business was started back in 2018, um, this farmer only had four people who had signed up. And now he follows the journey of the farmer from 2018, which was the baseline when this response was initiated to 2022. And you see that now this person has actually grown from four customers to 35 customers. So these are hard facts which tell you that, okay, the response must have done something right that people got interested and they subscribed to it. And you also see um, that the size of the land, which was under the possession, under uh, where people were growing, uh, people were paying the farmer to grow produce for them, also increased from 200 to 1500 square meters. So these are hard facts, which give you evidence to support why you're reporting on this particular response to this social problem. And lastly, limitations, again, very important. Um, also feeding back to the argument of solutions journalism should be something which is replicable and uh, can be adapted to different contexts. And if we talk about limitations, it makes people aware of how far we still have to go if you want to uh, make this response work for all or for a larger audience. And in this particular case, the limitation which was uh, put forward in the story was that most of the clients who had for now um, signed up for this farm mobile app were actually coming from a wealthy affluent background. These were people who were upper middle class because of course the rate of subscription of the three different models were such that an average working class citizen who is equally passionate about the environment and wants to do something about um, growing food organically, consuming food in, in an environmentally conscious way without any carbon footprint, or someone who supports farmer issues and wants to make their work more sustainable, just cannot be a part of this response and cannot benefit from their response because they cannot afford it. So this is the limitation. And the second limitation which was brought forward in this um, report was that um, there is a risk factor there is a risk factor because the farmer actually has to tell the particular customer that because of whatever conditions which are external and not in control of the farmer, 
um, whether chlamyd, they can be, they can be an uh, infestation by, by insects, etc. Um, in case there is a crop failure, then there will be a risk and the customer will have to pay. And beyond a certain percentage, the farmer has to cover up for the risk. So these are limitations which are really important to be brought forward in the story. And um, another tip that you can use while uh, practicing solutions journalism is that sometimes um, we get a lot of questions that, you know, it's difficult for me to find a limitation because the solution or the response is fairly new. It's only been there for a couple of months or a couple of years, and we can't find evidence. We can't really find limitations, but we have insights. So what do we do? In this particular case, you can revisit the story. Like here, you see that if you have this, this timeline from 2018 to 2022, when there is the growth of the customers and the growth of the land, and actually seeing this this model working and how this could also work for other farmers who could make their business sustainable. And that is something you can do. So in this particular case, it would make actually a very good follow-up story. Um, it could also be a good idea to do a series out of it if you do not have enough material to cover all four pillars of solutions journalism. So that is something you can work with. And um, lastly, and very quickly, I, I see there are a bit question, some questions in the chat, but just not to break the flow because I was my last slide and then I can answer them for you, is the question of community when it comes to reporting and solutions journalism, and uh, which is this, especially when you're talking about the environment, because we see that a lot of environmental solutions are unfortunately not coming from big corporates where they should come from, but from local communities and local actors you have to stop defining your community by their problems. Um, you should actually use the agency of the community and allow the community to define their problem the way it was done in the story. Uh, the voice of the farmers were used, how they were affected and the customers. And you're talking about actually the will of the people to do something about the problem that worry them. And that is very important. We are not presenting our uh, community as people who are helpless, who are just victims, um, who don't have much control over their circumstances, but it's reimagining the way we practice journalism as well. And you are giving them this agency that, yes, the community has the local knowledge and the tools to do something about it. So that they also take the role of journalists a step further. It's not just talking about accountability, it's talking about agency. And lastly, uh, when you're practicing solutions journalism, what's important is also to elevate the solution and to elevate the work that is done by the community while being very cautious that you do not sell it as the ultimate response because there is no ultimate response. There will always be local contexts which will make a response successful, fairly successful, or maybe a failure in a couple of years when you go back. But um, but the idea that the community tried to find a response to a problem to create social impact is essentially what we're trying to do here. Um, thank you. I will look at the chat and see if there were any pressing questions or if someone wants to unmute themselves and ask any question. Uh, thank I see. Now, so basically, I think that there, there are two groups of main question. One is about uh, journalism and PR, and this question has been coming back. So, um, so I just um, agree, and maybe we can also cover this. What is this the, the, the distinction between PR and journalism? And that we are here yeah. not saying that PR is bad. Of course, it's also a profession, that, but th just that there should be a clear distinction. What is journalism and what is PR? And that's why when um, reporting, um, doing solution journalism stories, we also have to cover the limitations, also speak about the model. So not about the company, but again, about the model, a response uh, to a certain topic. And there was another uh, question, just let me go back. Um, uh -huh. Isn't it better, so Maria Dalic asked, maybe Amina, if you can answer this, is it better to write about two or more solutions in order to avoid PR of one particular company? Two or more solutions in order to avoid PR. Um, I think again, it's actually it's it's a, I'm it's a very good question that you are already thinking on lines of not bashing PR as something that's bad because that is also not what we are trying to say. And this is the problem that we sometimes have in solutions journalism webinars that um, automatically people get the impression that we are against something and we are preaching to only follow 
one particular very rigid way of reporting. That's really not the case. Um, PR is definitely a profession, but by essence of PR, we all know that PR is the promotion objective promotion of the work of an organization. You're talking about uh, the launch of um, an NGO that is working around uh, providing disabled people better infrastructure and access. That would be a good PR campaign that, you know, they're, they're, they're doing this and it's, it's really good. It's, it's a very good effort on inclusion and diversity, et cetera, et cetera, city spaces, everything. But the next step, when why we call it solutions journalism is because you would actually interrogate the community who is putting this solution or this particular NGO, you would interrogate them and ask them, first of all, what is it that they feel is lacking? What is it that were challenges that were they faced when they were implementing this particular response? And also in solutions journalism, as opposed to PR, you need to have a lot of voices. You need to have a lot of characters, which is what I put, I think in one of the slides, I talk about it when I'm talking about qualitative and quantitative data. This is why evidence is important because the more characters you have, these can be voices of people who have implemented the solution. These can be voices of people who've benefited from the solution, or these could be voices of the people who are just observers in the community and who are not very sure if this will work because their skepticism is also important for you to include in the story. So eventually you do not take the responsibility of presenting something as a one shoe, one size fits all kind of uh, situation. So there is, there is uh, uh, the limitation and the evidence is something which is separating PR, which is a well-respected profession of a lot of people from solutions oriented reporting, which is a more, interrogation versus uh, interrogation slash whole story kind of approach to reporting where we are saying yes it's great work and we are very happy that people are doing this but let's go a step ahead and let's um, approach it a bit more holistically so that people around you who want to maybe adapt this in their local context have the opportunity to do so and do not meet with failures because we were not honest about what was working and what was not working so I think that is the approach behind it. If Anita wants to add something to that. Yes, um, so exactly. So um, again, we're looking at response. So not focusing on an individual or a company, but at response. So what can be done? So this question related if two or more solutions can be done. Maybe if there is um, a similar model is implemented in two or three cities or by two or three, two or three different organizations, it could be, for example, a series of articles about that. But why, why we always, to uh, say to journalists to focus on one particular model or response because in, in that in that way you can really go in depth go into the insights so um, for example when uh, our journalists were doing solution journalism stories and this is the distinction between pr as well they would really have they had lists of 15 uh, interviewees so looking at different uh, the the solution and the model from different angles so they had to interview city people in the city administration uh, p uh, people from the community the uh, or the people who benefited from that particular program uh, the people who set up that program so it's not only about that particular organization but really looking at from different angles and always focusing on the limitation i mean always telling what is not working because the main idea of solution journalism is not to promote it is really to show a response what are what what is working in this response and what it's not working sometimes journalists try to start a story and then uh, they see that actually it's not a good response it's not working but still it's also covering a response or to, uh, that perhaps did not have that uh, effect as people who started it thought it, it can have so it's really looking at the response or again a model or and not focusing on one organization um, most of the uh, topics that have been covered now are uh, come um, are for example from civil society sector or there are some articles that i read um, also for, um, like uh, uh, solutions that have been implemented by governments as well i remember reading a story about how chile reduced corruption in the government because they introduced a platform where or introduced a legal solution and a platform that um that uh, uh, requires transparency etc so they are also like 
state or um, state based solutions or um, uh, very big systematic solutions that or responses again responses um, that a journalist can cover so uh, it's really uh, looking at models uh, looking at limitations and that's why we always stress that it's not again this is the reason we are not saying that PR is bad or negative or but just to make sure that that it's not um, as PR. So it's not promotion of a certain organization individual, but really looking at the how a certain response works. And this is exactly and it really needs a lot of data, a lot of research. Again, journalists were covering one topic or one story for a couple of months or even more. Minal also knows um, it really takes a lot of time to obtain data. Yeah. So uh, to give answers to all the questions uh, of a solution journalism story. Uh, now there are um, this is the, the the how the solution journalism story should be done. Uh, again, as Minal mentioned, we are not here saying that every story is adaptable to solution journalism. Actually, it's not. There are really um, there aren't so many stories that could be done in this way. We are, of course, the main traditional journalism is really the basic and and investigative journalism is the top. Uh, level of journalism, right? And it should be practiced in that way. But that there are some stories, again, especially if there is a lot of awareness about the issue. A lot of times we are speaking about corruption in the government. Corruption. Is there a model? Is there a response? Again, let's check. Um, also, let's try to do the story from this angle. So um, this is what mm -hmm. what, uh, what is the <coughs> idea behind uh, solution journalism. Again, it's yeah. part of constructive journalism. So um, also looking how what is the effect of journalism on the society. So not only, okay, we will point to the problem, but we also thinking about the effect, um, uh, the way journalism or the way journalists and media outlets produce stories can have on the society. Um, yeah. So, and this should, can, can be seen. So this is constructive journalism. So really being, trying to be um, also constructive in our approach. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I don't see any in the chat for now, but I guess to add to what Anita said and for everyone to know that it's, we also have these discussions over often amongst ourselves who train uh, journalists in solutions journalism that the kind of energy and work that goes in producing a solutions story, it's actually nothing short of an investigation. You know, it's just that maybe you're not uncovering a drug cartel somewhere a drug cartel somewhere but maybe like at the end of the day you have taken the same amount of time to invest in the story in which you've gone around and you've uh, interviewed people to know if this solution was working for people in the community so i think we should also be kind to ourselves as journalists and all the effort that we make in finding these stories and and yeah on some days you just have to sit around and wait for the for the response to show up until then you you report on the problem no one is stopping you from that but this is just to kind of um, change your mindset and to encourage you to practice this this response oriented uh, journalism because like Anita mentioned and we have uh, research so it's not just we're saying this to encourage you or to motivate you but research says that uh, people engage with this kind of news more because as journalists also if we are passionate about our work it's our duty to make sure that the way people have been disengaging with news over the years and they're avoiding news because it's always about doom and gloom and things don't work. It's important to tell people that people like you and me have the power to come up with a response to an issue and how then that translates into impact and, and research shows that actually solutions journalism stories are shared more and people feel more positive and they have more self-efficacy after this and they feel like they can be a part of the response as well. So it is impact at the end of the day, and we're all slowly working towards that direction. Yes, and um, also, as we often uh, say, that uh, these models and these initiatives really deserve to be covered in the media. So um, there are also, again, especially looking at ecological organizations in the region, they really, and their initiatives, they really deserve um, space in the media um, as well. So it's really, uh, good that to uh, to approach the issue also from this um, uh, this angle. Um, maybe I'll, I just want to mention for me the the most difficult part in uh, so solution journalism was to 
you know, obtain so much data and then you ne really needed to put it, for example, in a short article or an article of 2000 words. So, and then also to try, and this is about practicing and really being also um, using simple language, trying to explain sometimes very complex topics in a simple manner, but also be trying to be creative. So sometimes um, uh, when I worked with um, uh, journalists, they would tend just, you know, to put data, data, data in their article. And this is not maybe attractive to audiences. So again, going back to the, the title of the, of the whole webinar is how to attract audiences. We encourage uh, journalists also to use um voices like from the community from people personal stories to try to you know through the throughout the article try to um also cover personal stories of people that attract audiences more and then also put data uh, in the story uh, some of the articles are also um, tend to look like um you know uh, also tend to use more descriptive it allowed also to use more descriptions than just you know basic uh um, traditional journalism, like a um, um, reportage when you would go to a, a place and then you can, you know, describe the setting or describe um, a particular um, community, etc. It's in that way you're really trying to attract um, but all, uh, audiences but and make your story more interesting, but then again, really using data, 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 again, um, using voices, looking at um, the model from different angles, etc. So definitely you will have time uh, to um, to prepare, uh, to read and to go through more stories. Um, okay, thank you uh, so much. Uh, are there any more questions? I think that good examples really deserve coverage and I think people are really willing <laughs> to talk and especially different organizations about their models and what they're doing and implement. Um, okay, thank you so much, Minal. Thank you so much. This was really thank great you. having thank you. you. Um, and thanks to all the participants. Um, I hope um, at least it was interesting for you and maybe that you learned or heard um, something new or at least you were reminded about uh, explanatory and solution journalism. So I uh, just uh, a few uh, technical uh, issues and uh, tips about uh, your homework. So you have your homework. We agreed on your homework. So just go through the tracker, try to find a, a um, solution journalism story on an environmental topic. This is also that you can go and research and see. It's also for you to see what is out there. So to check that there is really a lot of um, articles covering environmental topics and then read the articles with your group and or, or um, maybe there is a TV report, etc. And then try to answer the questions that are um, on the platform. Uh, there is a good news for you as well. The deadline for the this work has been extended due to holidays. So the deadline, the new deadline, and um, we will uh, put the deadline um, on your um, on the platform. So the deadline is uh, Monday, April 10 at 23 and 15. Okay. Uh, Monday, April 10. Okay. And if you have any questions, um, so you can use the platform to communicate with me throughout during the week. I, uh, I am happy uh, to answer a number of a number of words. Let me check. Number of words. Hey, sorry, Anita, I think I'm I'm going to head. And okay. uh, yeah, thank, thank you very much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, uh, I did not. Um, thank you, Minal. So I didn't play, um, I didn't write um, the number of words, but you can see here one or two paragraphs, one or two paragraphs for every question. So, um, so if you want to use more paragraphs, you're welcome, but I think it's also for us try to be brief and you know to the point and very focused okay try to use one or two paragraphs for every answer okay okay no word limit <laughs> thank you so much um have a nice evening and um we will stay in touch of course uh, during this week if you have any questions for the assignment just please uh, let me know Thank you, bye.